right here and using this megaphone to get your attention. I need to do things like this because basically I am a very boring person. With me, there's never a dull moment, just long stretches. Ladies and gentlemen, I have nephews and nieces. And when I'm visiting them, they always want Uncle Rock to read to them. And they always ask me to read a Berenstein Bear book. And I refuse! Because these Berenstein Bear books are disorienting our young people. Everything changes from one book to the next. A new baby, Brother Bear has his own room with a single bed. And go to school, Sister Bear has her own room with a single bed. And Sitter, they're sleeping in the same room in a bunk bed. And then, in messy room, they're in the same room. Beds become huge. It's like hallucinating. Reading these books is like being on mushrooms. You cannot come up with a better way of disorienting a young child. They're reading the Berenstein Bears at night. You might as well say to that kid, Hey, sweetie, this will help you to fall asleep. Here's a martini! It's an outrage! There's a big deal in Mama's new job. Everybody in the book is all right up about it. Papa Bear doesn't want his wife to work. She wants to work. And the two kids are confused. Well, of course they're confused. They never know from night to night where their bedroom is. <laughs> but nobody needs to be upset and confused. Because after this book, Mama's neutral is never mentioned again. <laughs> it's no big deal that she rented a store, she got Papa Bear to clean it up and make a sign, that she got all the women in Bear Country to make quilts to sell at this store. That they're all counting on her to sell their quilts. And in the next book, the whole enterprise is gone, vanished. <laughs> are good lessons for our children to learn. <laughs> Mobilize the community, sign contracts, have dozens of people counting on you for their income, <laughs> and then drop the whole thing. <laughs> I tell you this, if you have a Berenstein bear for a friend, you don't need enemies. <laughs> These books are instilling to talk and fascist values in our children. In trouble with pets, they get a dog, they get a pet. And in the next book, there is no pet. <laughs> Knowing that there is the bears, they probably ought to. Someone forgets to close the kitchen door with the puppy stay. So the puppy gets out and messes up their living room. And then there is no more puppy. <laughs> and then there's Farmer Ben's farm. Sometimes the farm is right behind their house. And sometimes it's miles away. You can't even walk there. They have to drive to get there. It would take a wizard like Harry Potter yeah. to figure out what the fuck is going on here. <laughs> Sometimes there's a baseball field in their backyard. And sometimes Farmer Ben's farm is in their backyard. And sometimes Farmer Ben's farm has a baseball field. <laughs> and sometimes it doesn't. 
And sometimes there is no baseball field. One time there was a lake. And then there wasn't a lake. And then some pandas moved into the house. Right across the street. And after they moved in, the house disappeared. The pandas disappeared. The dog disappeared. get in a fight. Brother Bear and Sister Bear make so much noise fighting that they disturb the neighbors. And in the same book, when the fight is over, the family is sitting out on their porch. No neighbors. <laughs> Nothing but just a dirt road and a rainbow. <laughs> Where are the neighbors? <laughs> Be afraid. <laughs>